and welcome to the first John Meyer podcast hosted live here at the fabulous Blue Wire Studios at Wynn in Las Vegas. First of all, I love that Rocky video. I think I'm going to play it 10 times over and for my kids tonight. That is freaking <laughs> awesome. I love doing that. All right, everybody. I'm your host, John Meyer, and we have an exciting panel discussion happening live here at the Channel Partners Conference in Ex and Expo. Right now in Vegas, thank you to all of our expert panelists from Prosper Ops, Cloud Zero, Exosphere, TD Cynics for joining today's topic of automating FinOps for cloud resellers and M MSPs. Powerful, profitable services at scale. Before we get started, how about we actually introduce our panelists and our guests. Starting off with my left here, we have Alan Han, founder and CEO of Exosphere. Alan? Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm uh, looking forward to the conversation and thanks for having me. Oh, Alan, I'm looking forward to it from everybody as well. Okay, and after him, we have Stephen O'Dwyer, Senior FinOps Specialist at ProsperOps. Stephen? Thanks, John. Happy to be here. Yeah, so Stephen and I actually had a chance to run into each other. We had this conversation beforehand at the DC um, you know, gathering and uh, for the FinOps thing. And he's like, who's this guy taking all these pictures? I'll tell you what. Yes, I am that guy, and you will see lots more of me. And I know off to his left, we have a good friend of mine who I've known quite a while now. And we seem to run into each other, especially in Vegas, Mr. Eric Peterson, founder and CTO of Cloud Zero. John, it's been a journey, hasn't it, to get here, right? Yeah. You know, this has been pretty fantastic. It is. This is going to be a great conversation. Thanks for I, having me. I agree with you and, and exactly what it is, is going to be a conversation and our two gentlemen sitting over in the chairs. We have Matt Fox, Global Director of TD Cynix. Matt, how are you? What's up, y'all? <laughs> Came in this morning from Texas, so I got to throw in a y'all. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, howdy to you. All right. So, and last but not least, who has become a really good friend of mine and helped create that awesome video that you just saw, Joe Henderson, Channel Sales at Prosper Ops. Joe? Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks for running through the streets of Philadelphia with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, real quick. Joe came up with this idea, and I said, let's do it. And we got up bright and early, and uh, we were actually running through market uh street down there the italian market with the fireplace it was awesome joe's idea fruition it came fully in like two three days it was freaking awesome all right joe before we jump into our topic today i, I want everybody to understand what does finops mean and what's the importance of it and why has it grown so rapidly yeah i think what we should do is actually go back in history a little bit and sort of set the stage of how we all got here so if you go back to 2006 uh, AWS brought out EC2. Fast forward six years to 2012, there's a $100 billion cloud market, cloud services market, and AWS released their APN program, as well as all these FinOps sort of 1.0 companies came to be because people didn't know what they were spending. So then you fast forward to 2016, Cloud Zero comes about, 2017, Exosphere, 2018, ProsperOps, which represents this 2.0 level of companies where we're helping people go that extra distance and actually automate some of the savings. So that would be a good place to start. All right, help me understand the 2.0 versus the 1.0 type of companies. Absolutely, so the 1.0 companies, which are still out there, they're still great. Um, we complement a lot of them. They are all about visibility, some dashboards and recommendations. Now these recommendations, the partner or the end user must action those recommendations to take the full advantage of savings. So these 2.0 type companies um, that we're talking about uh, are using AI, they're using um, machine learning to actually go in and automate some of this work because ultimately cloud engineers should not be spending their time on this type of work. This, the bulk compute to go after should not be spent time. So these engineers should be working on better projects. Okay, Joe, you said the bulk of the engineers shouldn't be working on these projects. And Steven, as a FinOps professional, I'm going to call you a FinOps professional. I hope you don't mind. Sure. Uh, so there was a survey that came out, and actually I didn't look at the latest one, uh, but it was like something like 35% of not being able to perform actions or actually doing actions. Is that one of the problems that we're running into with, you know, like say the 1.0 versus the 2.0 where I have actions to be done, but I can't do it, or 2.0 is I can do these actions automatically? Absolutely. Uh, in my work at AWS, as well as with a managed service provider, we would provide recommendations to customers on a platter. And unless somebody had the time or knowledge on how to manage those recommendations, it never got done. So actions make savings, recommendations do not. I don't have time to make those actions. You know, that's usually one of the biggest things. Alan, I'd like to get your take on this whole FinOps adoption for cloud partners. What are your thoughts? Well, I think, you know, if you look at the evolution of FinOps and the evolution of the cloud in general that we were just talking about, um, it, it only is natural that right now 
all these partners and all these customers are looking to reduce their costs. If you go back and you look over the history of that time, you know, first their focus was on moving workloads to the cloud. And, and you had a whole series of cloud partners out there that that was what they were focused on. That was their mission because that was the need of the customer, right? One thing that cloud uh, partners get right, right all the time is they listen to their customers and they execute on what they need. And right now, the time has come where what customers need is actually to reduce those cloud costs and have thus the focus on products like Exosphere, Cloud Zero, and ProsperOps. Okay, Eric, reducing cloud costs, Cloud Zero, FinOps, what does that mean to you in today's world? I mean, this is a loaded question because you know, if you looked at, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory in a, in a quick second, is that, you know, uh, a year or two ago, it was get everything to the cloud. And now with re recent economic changes, it's now reduce my cost and the focus is around that in the FinOps culture. What, what's your thoughts here? Uh, you know, th there's, there's, a, there's a million ways that we could talk about this. Right now, there's a really interesting thing that we're hearing just from the people who invest in this space. We talk about folks who are coming to us and they used to say, hey, grow at any cost. But that changed, that changed very recently to, to really focus in on well, why don't you grow efficiently? Why don't you try to think about this magic word that we never talk about, profitability, right? Because we can no longer do what we were doing before. We have to be efficient about this. And if you go all the way back in time, you know, when we started talking about the beginning, in 2013, AWS themselves, they were out there talking about cost as one of the benefits of why you move to the cloud. And I think we got away from that because the truth is, if you build efficiently in the cloud, you can actually save an enormous amount of money, but we got away from that. The good times were rolling, we were deploying everything. And now we live in this world where every engineering decision, every line of code is a buying decision. And these folks who are making those buying decisions, they just don't have the feedback to make good ones, right? So we have to automate this. We have to build technology into the stack. I mean, it's just humanly impossible to wrap your mind or your arms around this equation anymore. Every line of code is a buying decision. Uh, excuse me, I have to coin that right now because <laughs> that is actually true. I mean, think about that. Every type of action that is being performed, every type of infrastructure as code deployment that you're doing has a cost associated with it. Matt, I want to turn it over to you sure. and uh, I, I want to talk about FinOps. Is FinOps a tool that I can install in my environment? Can I just go in there and say, <laughs> okay, I have deployed FinOps. Yes, great. Now I'll walk away and <laughs> that's great. Yeah, we all wish it was that easy, right? But it doesn't have an easy We button. wouldn't have a job if, uh, <laughs> if, if it were. If you look at TD Cynics, most of our customers are really concerned with what they're building on top of the cloud. And, you know, they're choosing AWS often, which is what I represent at TD Cynics, which, uh, you know, is like the sports car. But they also don't want to pay a lot for that muffler, if you know what I mean, referring to the old, uh, old commercial from a while ago. So... They're, they'd rather go you know, optimize and spend that money on another data scientist or on another customer facing engineer. So, you know, if you look at FinOps.org and all the members, it's a crowded space. And, you know, the best players are here right now, so we're all good. But even beyond that, there's a bunch of riffraff that isn't on FinOps.org. So we help them make sense of the whole ecosystem and bringing together the different best practices, tools, and services to help them optimize costs so they don't have to worry about that aspect and they can worry about things higher up in the stack that really impact the customers and the customer experience. Joe, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, are you seeing that? Are you feeling the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. So when the FinOps Foundation sort of came out, I believe they had 11 partners that they launched. <laughs> I think there's, and this, these are vendor members, these are service providers, these are technologies. I believe there's over 90 now, and there's 10,000 practitioners. Mm -hmm. So the space is absolutely exploded, and there's a lot of sense that needs to be made. One of the one of the benefits of partnering with a company like TD Cinex is if we have a prospective reseller or MSP that is looking to build or enhance their FinOps practice, they can they can do it themselves. They can try to do it, or they can leverage a partner like TD who has already established these relationships, already has agreements with AWS that they can get started immediately in helping their customers. Mm -hmm.